Not yet. 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 Just to kind of introduce why we're all kind of here on a Saturday afternoon, uh, I host a show here called Minority Reports. It's a digital show. And we're doing an episode based around like the political ideologies of the black community um, and how they differ and where they overlap. And so we've brought you know, a nice eclectic group of brown people here to kind of discuss uh, politics and how we all come to our political ideologies as members of the black community in America Hopefully what this will do is allow our audience who probably wouldn't find themselves in this type of an environment to have this type of a conversation to learn something. Uh, so with all that being said, three words or less, when you think of Donald Trump, what is the first thing that comes to mind? And Rob, why don't we start with you? Strong. Make America great. Oh, me. Can we, uh, we'll can we come back, back to me? We'll come down. Can we come back to me? Oh, his ancestors' wildest dreams. Very scary. Trash. Man. Anti-black. Necessary. Mm. I just think unicorn in the sense of just causing unicorn. so <laughs> much discussion. <laughs> the reason why Donald Trump is in this spotlight right now is because of our past failed governments. Um, for the simple fact that when the Republican um, primary happened, there was like 16 different candidates. And don't get me wrong, there was like really good ones, really stature to the point that everyone in this group will be like, oh, yeah, I can see why he won. But, and Donald Trump became an opportunist and knocked down every single person week by week. Like, it was literally watching a different season of The Apprentice. Look what has America done that a guy from the outside can just walk in there, bing, bang, boom, it's, and take down these iconic, structured politicians that we look up to throughout our whole lives. Drain the swamp, as it was put. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But swamp. can we talk about that, though? Like, this whole notion of, like, a guy from the outside? Like, that's part of my issue, right? Like, if you really know how this country is being run, like, the country has always been run by rich billionaires. So, like, he's not from the outside. This country has always been run by pharma. This country has always been run by banks. This country is literally run by the industries that he made his millions and billions in. So, like, this whole thing, like, oh, he's a political outside, no, because politics has always been run by capitalism, which is the system that has always suppressed minorities. So, like, that's Wait a minute. even in itself. Capitalism, always. capitalism has always well, oppressed yeah, minorities. I don't we're think the first so. capital in this country. I don't think so. I do have to jump in <laughs> and take a little bit of umbrage with this idea that capitalism is some sort of system that oppresses minorities. Minorities um, to this point, and 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 also I don't like saying minorities. We want to talk about black yeah. people. Like, let's just talk about black people because I'm yes. not a minority. Yes, I'm not a person go. of color. Yeah. I'm black. Can we all agree? All right. So, so, so I just want to make that black. point. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when we look at capitalism as as something that has oppressed minorities or is oppressing minorities, we remove from ourselves the capacity to use capitalism in order to, to build exactly. our communities, exactly. in order to move forward for ourselves. Yeah. By show of hands, who here voted for Donald Trump? All day. <laughs> All Rob, you did not vote thing. for Donald Trump. I did not vote in the 2016 election. Tell me why. Um, I didn't vote in the 2016 election because at where I was in my life, I didn't feel like either of those candidates had earned my vote. I considered myself a Democrat at the time. I loathed. Hillary Clinton and the entire Clinton yeah. machine. Oh, and if you, and if you, and if you yeah, really, and if you really want to get into it, I voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary. Oh, Jesus. Like oh, no. Oh, Yo, no. you want to talk Hashtag about a conversion? No. Oh, God. You want to talk about a conversion? Ugh. I voted for Bernie Sanders in the New York State primary. Like, Jesus. That's, that's where I was, Ugh. okay? For the black conservatives, how do you align with white conservatives when they speak mal of black people, just in terms of how, especially they speak of black men. You, like call, my, you call them out. My yeah. whole thing that's like Not for me. Not even calling them out, but just no, how you stand with them when they are speaking mal against them. We don't stand with them. Like, when it's she not... calls, um, you know, kids super predators. Oh, okay. I'm a super predator. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying so overtly and continuously. How do you do that? It's overt and continuous from the Democratic Party as well. So, so, so. People are people. Either way. Either way. Any way you go. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be racist But there are going to be some racists all over the place. So now it's like, okay, yo, watch your mouth. Like, I'm not, okay, we're not going that route. What is your reaction when you see a black person wearing a MAGA hat? 
I didn't hear the last part. When you see a black person wearing a MAGA hat, three words or less, what is your reaction? Go for it. Oh, I, was, I, you know, I thought she said that. Was his, that was his. That was his. <laughs> that was his. That was his. That Okay, but that's his response. Was, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> three words or less? There is a story. I don't know. That's four. I don't know. There is a story. <laughs> Independent minded brother. Ooh. I got one word. It's bold. That's so funny. He said brother. Confused. Oh, cringe. Cringe. Ew. <laughs> Uh, you do you. Looks good on you. Can't fit on my head. What is your and perception okay. of black conservatives? Believing in Trump's rhetoric, just morally, I don't understand. Because morally, just him as a person, as, a, as an entity, just seem, is just super corrupt. And his ideologies, um, I don't understand how anyone can go, can be about it, but especially, especially a black person, just as a, an identity as a black person, I don't understand it. Um, worse. But the thing about it is, is that he asked you about conservatism and then you took it to Trump. Like, girl, well, just say what you feel about black so conservatives. We were, we were talking about oh, black okay. so yeah, that's, That was my connection, no, yeah. For those of us who identify as conservative, right? I want to hear about your treatment within the black community, being an outspoken black conservative. And then I want to hear about the perceptions that you think people have of you. Um, whoever wants to start. Well, I'll start with myself. Go for uh, it. <laughs> because, like, uh, so look, you're going to hear, and I'm, I'm going to let Bevelyn speak to the black perspective, but I'm going to speak from the gay perspective, sure. all right? Because I came out as, as a black gay conservative about six months ago. I have been treated horribly by other gay people. The only friends that have dumped me, or quote-unquote friends that have dumped me for, for being conservative Republican have been the gay ones. The people who give me the most so grief on social media have been the gay ones. The people for that love. call me the nasties, all kinds of like, oh, house nigga, Uncle Tom, like all this stuff. Like these have been gay people or the people from the quote unquote tolerant and inclusive LGBTQ community. All right. <laughs> so this is what my experience has been. And, and being somebody that has been an advocate and still consider myself an advocate, just not in the way that they want me to be. I was very shocked by that because I think that when I came out as conservative, they like to push forward this, this, this veneer of inclusion and tolerance, and that dropped like that. So it was the nastiest treatment that I had ever seen, and I never expected it. And you never expect it as a gay person until it happens to you. For me, like, it started with my high school friends. Everybody was unfriending me on Facebook because, you know, I was talking about the Trump election and I went to the inauguration and all of that. So my fam and then it trickled down to my family. Aunts won't speak to me even now. I got aunts that don't talk to me because I'm, um, I want to be white. So it's like I get this stigma all the time. Wow. Oh, oh, you you wanna be white and you don't move to New York City and now you think you you out there with the big city folk and you wanna be white. That's it, it seems like when I speak of what I speak of, it's only the fact that I just wanna be white. And that's so far fetched from the truth. Um, I've been called a bed wench. Mm. I've been called and I mean, I'm talking about from my black brothers who on a, they, uh, they page be talking about black queens and all of this stuff like Trump. that. But the moment I don't agree with nothing they talking about, now I'm a bad witch. Now I'm, now, you know what I'm saying? I'm all this other stuff. And it's just like, I mean, to be honest with you, ain't nobody been boss enough to say none of this stuff in my face. And they not gonna. They all of this is via social media. We know this. But at the same time, it's just like uh, hatred. It's been nothing but hatred. And, you know, for me, it's like, even when I deal with liberals who may have their little mindset or way they think, I ain't gonna disrespect them and call them all types of names. It's like, I've, I've gained all that flat and disrespect. And it's just like, because I want to be white, this is what I get. So does anyone uh, so else? I, well, sure. I, I, I made a statement on, online. I got you know, a lot of people commenting on it was, I didn't see true racism in this country until I became a conservative. Facts. Because I've seen hate, hate speech come from people. You don't talk about left always talking about hate so much. I saw true hate coming from the left and it was, White yes. people calling me Uncle Tom, pretty much. White people tell me I'm not black enough, which is oh, racist. No, it's yeah. there, bro. And, 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 and when you call them out on it and you say they're racist, they're it's like, no, I'm not. Then they, they made think so. about it, like, well, yeah, I am kind of being racist. Yeah. That's how racist the left still is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I oh, had family members, like she said, my aunts that don't oh, talk to me anymore. I have high school friends, students of childhood that mm -hmm. don't, don't, you know, don't talk to me, unfriended me. And a lot of white friends as well. Now, I'm not talking about just black friends, but I'm talking about people on the left in general just have that hate in their heart, in my opinion. And it just, 
you know, that's I mean, what I felt And it's, it's so interesting that on the left, like, the, the wokies is what I call them. These are the people that are, that are woker, <laughs> woke 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 than you can ever be. <laughs> but, but the wokies <laughs> give the white liberals of the left this the space to tell a black person how to be black that, that and that how you are supposed yes. to experience yes. black yes. yes. and yes. how you're supposed to think as a black person. Oh, no. Who here voted for Barack Obama? <laughs> Damn near everybody. Well, no, twice. Campaign, twice. For, campaign for him in 08. Both times. So did I. So he had a I great ask, campaign, I just didn't vote for him. That's a semi-personal question, did anyone vote for him just because he was black? Not just, but that was a big reason I voted for him. See, I'll admit, it's really funny because I'm a conservative, <laughs> and I will admit that I voted for, for uh, Barack Obama in 2008 purely because he was black. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll admit right. that. And I, I did too. You know, I'll admit it. And, and the reason why I voted for him is because I was so open to and, and so available to be mm -hmm. used by all of the systems that made that person president, right? Mm -hmm. And for all of the systems that, that were promoted to me, this idea, that just because he is biracial, African-American, whatever you want to call it, that he is going to somehow have my best interests at heart, that he somehow yes. comes from the same experience Actually, that I did. No Barack idea. Obama did not come from the same experience as me. Let me tell you something. I grew up black Obama. and poor in Akron, Ohio. Okay? This person was born and raised in wealth and privilege his entire life. Mm -hmm. And the idea mm -hmm. that this person was somehow more connected to me because we share the same skin color is crazy. Yep. But I bought it, and it was sold to me. I bought it. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I made the same mistake in a way that I voted for him mainly because he was a black man. Same mistake. And, uh, yeah, I made same, yeah. Uh, same mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake, it was definitely. A mistake. Yeah, and, uh, was. and eight years later, the mistake, that's the one reason why I'm conservative now, because I said when I was young, more naive, I was willing to vote for somebody because of the way they look. And look what it did for me. Absolutely nothing. Listen, so I make sure next time I make a vote, it's going to be with some substance. It's going to make sure where somebody's going to have what they're saying and what their actions is going to make me cause their vote. And that's so why I vote for So before we move forward, uh, by a show of hands, who is disappointed with the Barack Obama presidency? I'm why? disappointed with pres. I mean, I'm disappointed with all of them. I can talk about a couple of things. I mean, I can talk about a couple of things, right? Sure. I mean, we put a black face oh on a white imperialist nation and expected that change was going to happen. Um, my grandmother, my ancestors, especially my grandmother, my grandfather, they were sold that that was what the American dream was supposed to look like, that a black man could come in this country, could that black people could come. come come from chattel slavery and achieve the highest position in the land. Um, unfortunately, the way that these systems of oppression work, especially K through 12, we're often taught that leadership, uh, what's going to lead black people to liberation, is going to come from a white man. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, so like when we then had a black face up there, it really felt like, oh, oh, we, we really close. Like, we really, really close. Um, but then it was a lot of unlearning that a lot of us had to do, a lot yeah. of unlearning that we all yeah. still currently have to do to understand that our oppression, you know, where our oppression came from and the fact that, like, we're never going to be led to liberation in a binary system. Mm -hmm. A binary system for black people is literally always going to be us choosing the lesser of two evils, exactly. no matter how you slice it or dice it. Whether it's a Republican in office, whether it's a Democrat in office, I'm always choosing my so death loud. either as a blunt force blow or death by a thousand paper cuts. And it tends, why I guess in general black people always lean democratic is because that death is by a thousand paper cuts as opposed to what I'm dealing with right now where I'm watching HIV funding being stripped as a black queer HIV positive person, where I'm watching trans people losing all of their rights in this country as an LGBTQ person. What so, rights are trans people losing? Are you kidding me? Yeah, good question. Yeah, I'm yeah, you want to no, I'm okay, serious too. I, 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 yeah, I can take it. Yeah, yeah. I can take no, it. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm gladly, no, I'll gladly I'll take it. it. I'll gladly take it. So we can start with in 2017, the Office of National AIDS Policy was taken away. There is no more not Office of National AIDS Policy. Transgender women, including especially black trans people, are the highest infected people of HIV in this country, including black MSMs. So you had that office taken away. You then have had where $586 million was removed from the Ryan White Fund and transferred for the border separations. Ryan White money is what pays for people to have HIV care in this country when they cannot afford it. That includes transgender people. You have where seven words were removed from the CDC funding 
including vulnerable, transgender, and scientific base. So now companies that supported trans rights and trans people can't write grants to get money to help that particular demographic. You have the transgender military ban. When I say that they are literally attacking LGBTQ rights, this is not a joke. It is just coming because it's so much bullshit going on, you just miss that every day these little things are happening. I just wanted to say, it's, it's curious to me, because I'm somebody who's gay as well. I'm gay. I'm not queer. I'm not LGBTQ. I am a gay so, man. So you can't speak to what I'm speaking but, um, to. No, I can't. And, and, and what's so curious to me <laughs> is that we talk about our community as if everybody that's transgender is infected with HIV or has housing insecurity as everybody that's a gay and lesbian, like black or male that's or not whatever. Even what I, I mean, that's not what like, I said. So this is how, so like my whole thing is, yeah, so my whole thing is, this is how we speak of the community all yeah. the times, is that we are always some so, oppressed oh, victim. Yeah. Oh, okay, so oh. trans yeah. 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 so let me ask another question. As a gay person, it drives me insane because I fought for LGBT rights when I got arrested at the front of the White House protesting Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal because I served in the military for five years. Privilege. I grew up poor and black in Akron, Ohio, all right? I went to one of the worst schools in Akron, Ohio. I went to the military, risked my life multiple times, okay, to get every single thing well, that I that have right now. There is no reason that every single black kid on the block can do that same thing. Oh, no, 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 so before we get in there, we're not going there. We're not going there. We're not going there. I think we should, though. We're going to get to all this. So you didn't vote for Donald Trump. I did not. What are the issues that you take with the president? So um, just really quickly to um, a point that George said, right, that I feel like uh, the candidates that get being put up year after year after year keep hardlining us. We're, we're saying we're choosing the lesser of two evils, right? where I think that it's really important that we see candidates that come from our communities that are talking about, like, for me, right, I'm 25 years old. Um, my student loan debt uh, was due on Monday. Still haven't paid that, right, because don't got the money to pay that right away. So thinking about what are ways that we see people who are experiencing the same thing, who are coming from our community, who also recognize the historical debt that this country has to black people and to people of color so that we can move forward. So we know that, like, none of us are free unless all of us are free. Thank you. So, but uh, no, when it comes to... That's a good I'm teacher. Sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.
hustling, scamming, please, okay? And so what I did was I made a choice to surrender my life to Jesus and live righteously. And so what he did was he put me in a position to where now I can teach people about finances and how to get out of the illegal game and clean their money the right way, get their credit on point, get into real estate, flip houses, and live a good stewarded life with money. So now I'm taking my cousins who all sell drugs. All of my cousins sell drugs. If they're not playing ball, they're selling drugs. And if they're in jail, they're getting out to sell drugs because ball they're too old for ball. So all they know how to do is get money. So how do you tell somebody who's been getting money all their life, oh, so now I'm about to work a regular job, like get paid and they're going to take tax out my check? And then they don't even know where the taxes is going. So they just work 40 hours a week. They thinking they're about to get a nice little $500 check and say $250. They're like, wait, what? I'm about to go cow, sell cow, drugs cow. again. So now exactly. I have to teach them how to get out here in the legal game and let's flip this money the right way. And again, the taxes that are placed on these businesses can either help us or hurt us. And what Trump is doing is helping me teach my cousins in the hood how to move so that they can get money and not keep busting people upside the head for money or selling drugs to people. Mm -hmm. These people that are continuously living on welfare, we're paying for it. So the more you're giving them in food stamps, people. the more you're allowing them to extend their, their lifestyle in the projects, the more money is coming out of my pocket but as, a taxpayer, but as a taxpayer, and then now it's hindering my business. Well, now, I'm not paying that much taxes. I got more money. So now, if I need to say to homie, yo, listen, I got five racks. I'm about to invest this into you so we can start working on your business. And if we're going to let the money circulate, once it circulate, you could go out on your own. If taxes are taking that money, how can I take that five racks and give it to him? That's part of my problem with Donald Trump is he's literally making the rich richer. And what, the, what happens with that? The poor have to get poor. Raise your hand if you agree with the statement that I'm about to make. The welfare system destroyed the black family. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Right. So for yes. the people who Where's did not raise their hands, please tell me why you disagree with that assertion. You do not agree with that assertion. Oh, that's, well, that's a hard question disagree. because because it didn't the help or hurt. Right it's the yeah, same. It's, it's the, the same. Right. It's the same thing because I believe at one point you know you couldn't get welfare if you had a man in the house or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's just. And I think the other issue is, like, nobody's actually talking about, like, how that system, like, those systems, affirmative action benefited more white women than it did anybody nobody else. Nobody talks about affirmative oh, action. I, okay, like, like why do they bring up things that don't got nothing to do with it? First of all, let him finish, let him finish. No, I'm exactly. literally about to make a correlation, but, you know. Please, yeah, please. What I was going to say is that a lot of these systems that literally have been stereotyped to look like it's black people who benefit the most from them, it's actually white people who benefit the most from them. So that's what I was hoping, so that's what I was going to. So when I brought up affirmative action, I was bringing it up as a correlation. Like, affirmative action is always so publicly, like, it's benefited more black people, people when it actually has yes, benefited well. more white women. Welfare is a system that there are more white people in this country on welfare than black people. More white people have benefited from welfare than yeah, black no, people. So, like, when we want more white people in the country, what does white people have to do with what is going to black people? Why every time we talk about white people, we start black people start going back to white people. Why does everything have to be Because if we understand how systems of oppression work, we would understand that the system is being so publicly as something that black people or destruction of black people when realistically. Like, people who talk about welfare, I thought we said we wasn't going to talk about each other. We was gonna play nice in the sandbox before we got here. <laughs> and finish, oh, we're nice. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then we'll open it up to rebuttals. <laughs> George, please uh, finish your point. Yeah. So again, my point goes back to like when, like, just like what she was saying, like with the whole like whether it hurt the black community or whether it helped the black community, that's not really the issue. The issue is that all these are systems of oppression, oppression and all the systems are interconnected. And we can't keep looking at these systems as like, oh, well, this is this one thing and this affects this. Like, even when she was bringing up her paycheck, she's like, well, my paycheck is going to this. Like, yeah, but your paycheck is also going to infrastructure. Your paycheck is also going to Medicaid. Your paycheck is also going to Medicare. Your paycheck is also going to Social Security, which is what helps my grandmother survive. Your paycheck, like, you know so what I mean? So I'm paying so for like, your grandma, that's yeah, Okay. But your kids Hold are going to pay like, for you, too. You see no, what can, we have a, can we make our own I'm, choice wait, to wait, say wait, that wait, we want to put our own money to Finn, the side to help what I'm we I'm never going to get it. So again, what I'm saying is, like, my point that I'm trying to make is that the systems are interconnected. So, like, you, you know, can't just better. keep speaking, like, this system is this, and we need to remove this money from this system. It's like, that's not how that works. These systems are all interconnected. So it's not like you're just removing something from here, and it's not going to have a chain reaction on the other ways that they're able to oppress us through a different system. And I understand all this, and, and we can have these very academic conversations about <laughs> yeah. systems of oppression and, and intersectionality and all these other things. Like, 
we can do That's that not even all academic. day long. Everybody <laughs> yes. has a degree here. Yes. <laughs> but what we really need to assumption. talk about is how do we help the people right now? Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Can you help the people right well, you now? Yeah. Just said, yeah. Everybody has a degree here. So let me, let me ask this. Y'all want to help someone? Give me time. Somebody give me time. Give me time. One second. One second. One second. One second. So what are the... Uh, what are the policies that you have seen put forth either by conservative politicians or by our current president that you agree with, that you feel are benefiting the black community? Uh, just for example, you look at Trump, what he did with the, he's doing with the tariffs, with the trades. And yes! How you know, he's done that, now he's bringing jobs back into the country. When you get jobs back into the country, black unemployment is at the lowest it's been in American history, black unemployment is at right now. So that benefits not just me, but any person that's black. Mm -hmm. How's that not benefit? That's, Trump has everything, a lot of things Trump's done when it comes to jobs, the economy, comes to the stock market, I'm investing for the first time in my entire life and making a lot of money, by the way. Thank you, Donald Trump, for that. So, I mean, and I'm a black man, and my black man, is there an invisible wall that's this wall that says, oh, you're black, you can't invest? No, I go right through that wall and I invest. That's what blacks can do. We need to stop playing victim and start being victor. Mm. Yes. So, so, so let me ask this. For those of us who have a problem with some of the policies that have been offered by conservative politicians or by the sitting administration, I want to ask you a very specific question. Do you believe that either the sitting president and his administration offer racist policies or that the party that conservative politicians fall under offer racist policies? I want to stop no, calling cool. things that's racist. Cool. Sure. Yeah. No, but tell me why. Want to hear that. It's, again, like, I, that's why I don't talk anymore in, like, in terms of racism. Like Toni Morrison said, racism is a distraction. She had a very good point Tom on how so it distracts us from doing the actual work we need to do. I work in my community. I do HIV testing. I, 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 I physically work with the people who I talk about. Like, you know what I mean? I don't tell people, go pull yourself up by the bootstraps. I go buy the goddamn boots for them because I have a little bit more privilege than them. But when we talk about it, I'm just talking about anti-blackness because this is a global thing. And I think that's the part that they were bringing up earlier. Like, we can't just look at, like, some isolationism um, just of black Americans or just of this. Like, anti-blackness is a global thing. And it's all interconnected. And the problem is, like, people are like, oh, we shouldn't talk about the intersections. We've never had the ability to talk about the intersections. So this is the time that we actually need to start talking about the damn intersections, because we've never had that opportunity. If the one thing I will say about Donald Trump is that, yeah, he opened up the floor for conversations. Yeah. So now, oh. because now for the first time ever in this country, okay. white people feel I guess oppressed. It was necessary. Now that white people feel oppressed, they calling me all the damn time because now they want to know what oppression feel like. Oh. And now they want to know, well, oh. how'd you get through this? Because now I'm getting booked and busy all the damn time because oh. white people feel oppressed. Oh. And oh. that's who they sound oh. like. That look like them, and they're not used to that. A particular part of this country, for the first time ever in their whole lives, feel just as oppressed as my ass is. Um, and can we also talk like about like the tax bill? Because you know you talk sure, about tell the me, economy. tell me about that. Um, so my biggest issue was with that tax bill. I think recently one of the bigger companies got ten million dollars in like tax benefits, and they're going to donate it. But that money belongs to you. That money should be for you and all of us and all our family. It doesn't belong to the 1%, 10% of America. When we talk about black people and the one percenters and the rich and all that stuff, why do we always assume that black people are broke? No, 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 we, we're always operating under the assumption <laughs> that all black, black people, people are broke, broke. that yeah, black right. people, that there are no black people in the 1% of this country, that there are no black that. people that are CEOs, <laughs> that there are no black people that are business owners, that there are no black people that so head low. and run the that's corporations that benefit from these tax like breaks. Like why even so use black so magical so black people? That's about black people from the prism of brokenness and oppression as if the black 1%ers don't exist. Again, As like deep, that's a, deeply deeply well, okay, we'll talk about this black one. Black. But we can talk about the exception and the rule, right? Because what you're speaking of is the exception of black. Uh, we need to start actually having like, be a real Disney movie. Though. Real conversations about reparations, right? And like what reparations actually oh, look God, like. Not oh, reparations. Not reparations. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. wait. You guys are okay with, with, with um, Jewish people receiving reparations right now in this time, but Love. you're you're like, the, the, oh no. Wait, there's not enough time in the day no, for us to have the reparations no. conversation. People have websites where they've actually created models and thinking about like, oh, even if you forget the mule, right? What is actually 40 acres for um, for black people look like? Or just 
recognizing that the trauma and the history that uh, has been affected on black people. Like, I think about like uh, literacy, right? You can't tell black people for 200 plus years that you can't read and then give them books and be like, why aren't you reading? Why aren't you reading without addressing that trauma, Again. right? There's things yeah. within our you system, have to talk about within ourselves, yeah, that we need to, to address. You, you, know, you know what the problem is with the black person? I'm gonna tell you what conservatism has ever given me is the opportunity to see myself as an individual. Thank and you. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that. Collective. Yes. All the time. I, it just for me, it's just like we're we're when we're behind people, like that. we're always supposed to be a part of some monolith and collective where we're just supposed to always be talking about the Why is so and, and this is the thing, stuff. you speak completely. So it's when like, you why, talk is, about why does every like black people. person, why does why is a black person we have to always compare ourselves to white people for yeah. it to be some but this but, but the white people no, so it's like it's like because they see them as a perfect was, example in my mind i feel like I, at the end of the day i'm beveling Beatty. that's all i am and all i know what to do is when that check come that check say my name on it when that rick come and say my name on it. When my phone bill do that say my name who here was raised in a black democratic household black democratic. i want to hear what your reactions are to black voters being synonymous oh. with the Democratic Party. Well, okay. here's the thing. The reason that black voters are synonymous with the Democratic Party is because we've been on the receiving end of about 50 years of an onslaught of PR. It comes from our entertainers. It comes from our ball players. It comes from our singers. It comes from the Democratic politicians who, some of, most of which are black and empty, mm -hmm. but are being used to sell us this idea of the Democratic Party being the home of African Americans. Mm -hmm. And that is why we vote 90% Democratic. Now, let me tell you something. There is not another demographic in the world that votes nine out of 10 votes for one party. Mm -hmm. Why is that still something to be proud of? Why do we, why do we say that we are proud to vote 90% for Democrats? They don't have to do shit for us, okay? Because they know they're gonna, they're gonna get 90%. You wanna respond? I think you're kind of essentializing just like black people in general, because my perspective of, I didn't raise my hand, but like I did kind of grow up in a black democratic household. And like my family, I came here when I was four from um, the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Central Africa and like, my mom didn't know Democratic or Republican. She yeah, just, she just, knew, policies. She just <laughs> knew policies. And she was watching the news and she was seeing what policies benefit, benefited her and her three children because she was a single mother. So like, I think that's definitely essentializing the black community. Just like you're saying you want it to be an individual, you're kind of not doing that by, you know, essentializing these. But, this but I have to use the example because 90% of us vote a certain yeah. way. You know, so just Even in the context of the conversation, I have to say, well, if 90% of us are voting a single way, like, why is that? And, and to me, that's a big driver of, of why. Yeah, and that's, it opens yourself up for brainwash for a community as well, yeah. because home, political yeah. leaders, they see you voting that much blindly like that, they're going to lie to you and do whatever, because they know you're going to She just said policy. Hold on. Yeah, from a policy standpoint, if you want to jump in, please. It's not as much groupthink as people assume it is, as much as it's harm reduction. So one of the things that I often talk about, because I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I'm just black and I'm George. Yes, yes. I talk about what we need to do in our communities, right? Local level, macro level, Absolutely. micro level, right? Because that's really where it starts. Voting isn't the beginning. Voting isn't the ending. Voting is just a tool in the toolbox. That whole toolbox includes us as black people when we do get money and when we do get on and when we do get these things, going back and bringing other people along with us, not shitting on them because they couldn't pull themselves up by bootstraps. Again, like I always talk about that whole bootstrap argument because some people don't have boots. Yep. So it's like when you're telling people that they can pull themselves out of somewhere, some people don't even have anything to pull from. What is it about conservative politics that have convinced you that either the Republican Party or conservative politicians have your best interests in mind as black people in America? My biggest thing is this. I feel like a lot of conservatives, they just want to mind their business. They want, they want to get their hands out of your pot and have you do what they did, figure themselves out. And I want to go back to student loans because I pay student loans, OK? I went to school for fashion marketing and merchandising, did not use the, use the degree at all, it, it threw it away, and now I've got all this money to pay back. So now every month, I pay my bill on time. It reports to my credit. And because I paid on time, my, I got good credit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm still able to utilize my credit to go further. So for me, I'm That's not America. asking for the government to make better policies for me to pay back my loans. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work my business 
And when I got the money I need, I'm going to pay it off. And then mm -hmm. what I, let me, let me answer though. And then when I get the chance and I make that money for my kids, if my kids choose to go to college, me as a parent, that's my responsibility yes, to make sure that absolutely. I pay for their education yes. or Fiscal I open the doors for entrepreneurship. People. So, cause my kids don't have to go to college. If they want to own businesses, they can own businesses. If they want to get their education, mm -hmm. they can get your, their education and work for their brother or sister who owns a business. Mm -hmm. So in my, my reality is this, how is it that the government keep, have, keep having to pay back stuff that's our choice in the first place? Right. Ain't nobody putting no gun in nobody head making nobody go to school. That's what Period. capitalism's saying. And we know, capitalism is not saying that. Capitalism is not saying that. Capitalism is not saying that. No, no, capitalism, that's not true. Capitalism is not saying that. Capitalism is saying that you can start a business through trade. If you want to go be a doctor or lawyer, you could do that. Or if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can do that. It's still a choice. Regardless of what, it's a choice. That don't mean that because, oh, it's a choice. But now we got to pay our taxes for the fact that you wanted to go to school and now I got to pay for that? No, no, no. Let's let him respond. We literally we shame the people who don't go to college, the people who, who um, are... America we does. Like, we literally oh, shame We say, like, for you to be successful in this country, you have to get a degree. You have to speak English, right? Some like, there's all these things that, that yeah. are told to us that, like, yes. you have to do Can I make to be successful in this country. If we don't do that, then you won't amount to anything, Can I make right? a strong point? Because I agree with exactly what you said, is that we tell people in this country that they ain't shit if they don't have a college degree. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest lie that, thank that, you. that we tell thank to you. people. And it's it a is lie. a huge lie that we tell to black kids that they are nothing without a college degree. Because you want to talk about student loan debt. I got student loan debt. You got student loan debt. She got student loan debt. These people got student loan debt. debt. So what we're doing is we're telling these kids that they are nothing unless they have this degree, which is virtually worthless, okay, at a certain point. What we need to start telling our youth to do is to build businesses. Like, you don't need a degree to do that. And we have a system that is putting these kids, putting this idea in their mind that they need this degree to be worth something and making them indebted to the government at the at same the time. At the same time. Until we change that, we're going to start The solution, the solution is entrepreneurship and capitalism. We're going to start yes. to lose some of us um, within um, the next, um, like, 15-ish um, minutes. So I want to, like, move along. We're going to go into overdrive here. Who here believes that the black vote should be courted more? Oh, well, then, uh, yeah, of course. So for those of you who didn't raise your hands, why, why did you not, why because do you not I, feel that way? Because I don't way? trust when they start courting us. Like, I'm, I'm always like, oh God, what do they want? What are they trying to do? Yeah, they haven't really here. helped like us it. before. What do you want us to do now? And then we're going to be left with nothing. A person has to serve the majority. So if we're talking high level politics, no matter who you vote for, the majority of this country ain't me. It doesn't look like me. So it's never going to be anybody who's going to do anything that's going to make a movement and a needle on that type of level. Now, if you want to talk about micro-level politics and councilmen and who's sitting on the student board, who's sitting as the mayor, now we could talk about that all day. I strongly agree with him when he says that we don't talk enough about local politics. So that's where I'm at. That's why but I said, like, I cannot agree with that. You could do I think, it. I think that the, the best thing that we can do in terms of thinking about advocacy is how do we set up certain policy and legislation to keep those people accountable, right? Like, we need to be critical of both sides and thinking how people actually know what's on the ballot. Like, what are the propositions that are happening? Because I don't think both sides are educating our people properly at all. On the props, yeah. That's true. I would like to say, like, this whole conversation, listening to everybody, some things I do disagree with, uh, some we are, but I agree with a lot of the entrepreneurship thing. Like, I'm investment. I think that we all want the same things. Everybody wants a boot. We all want boots. Some of us want more boots than others. Yeah. And I think we need to figure out how do we get there together? How do we work together to get the, what we yeah. want, yeah. which is the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, I think we have different ways so, of getting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, I mean, we're good. That's it. We're good. We're good. Guys, I appreciate it. Everyone signed everything. Oh, can we take a picture? We can take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta take a picture. Everybody say democracy. Democracy. Black say it. Uh, <laughs> you did not just say it.